It is the Queen's speech and the Westminster village is full of pomp and circumstance. Meanwhile, the cost of living crisis is ongoing and getting more serious, with millions of households across Britain stressing how they can make ends meet. Away from the parliamentary ceremony, war in Ukraine is ongoing, of course, pushing up prices everywhere. Russia's a major exporter of fuel, food, fertiliser. And Ukraine also ordinarily annually sells millions of tonnes of wheat and other crops. The UK's cost of living squeeze was serious before Putin invaded in late February. Since then, war in Ukraine has made it even tighter. The Chinese government's meanwhile pursuing a relentless zero COVID strategy despite access to vaccines. Major cities across China, the world's biggest manufacturer, are back in strictly enforced lockdown. That's limiting the exports of millions of Chinese made components every day, hitting supply chains and slowing economic growth across the world. As the economic storm clouds gather, stock markets are feeling the strain. Weak Chinese export data saw Hong Kong's Hang Seng index of tech stocks fall more than 3% yesterday, a huge drop. In the UK, the FTSE All World Index, our main measure of global share prices, also tumbled 3%, hitting levels not seen since the depths of lockdown. The US's S&P 500 index and the Nasdaq measure of tech stocks, they fell even more. Back on the high street, as fuel and food bills spiral, UK consumer spending fell in April. That's according to new figures from the British Retail Consortium out today. It's the first time retail sales have fallen again since the depths of lockdown. As the Bank of England raises interest rates in a bid to tame inflation and utility bills rise even more, retail sales could drop further. Now, I'm a pretty experienced journalist and commentator. On the Money is a respectable show. I take my role as a broadcaster seriously. Having a public platform does come with responsibilities, especially when the subject matter is people's livelihoods. So be assured that I'm weighing my words carefully when I say that it strikes me the UK is now heading for a fully blown cost of living emergency, with millions of households, on benefits or not, unable to afford the absolute basics. And that's a reality which, amidst Partygate and other parliamentary games, I don't think the vast majority of our political and media class have yet grasped. But let's look at today's Queen's speech, the government's legislative programme going forward. Let's examine what this does for hard-pressed households. And that's our on-the-money question today. Does this Queen's speech offer anything to help us beat the squeeze?